You ready? Okay. Okay. Um, Good practice this morning. Excited to get to the point now to where we uh, start really honing in on obviously not just the Weber game, but getting the kids back, getting their feet back and legs back underneath them. So it was a crisp, clean practice today, and we're excited about continually to prepare. We need to take advantage of every moment. I challenge the kids today to, you know, gain experience uh, in their mind, take care of their bodies, eat it, sleep it, train it for the next 72 hours, and we'll get ourselves prepared to move on to the next adventure. Coach, I know you've been through this before at other schools, new head coach, but could you talk a little bit about, for you personally, how excited you are about getting the season started in a few days and just being here at, at Oregon State? Yeah. Um, first of all, it's always very exciting to get to this point of the year. These kids have put in countless hours and time and effort, energy, um, and uh, we've gone through a lot together already, but the season is always such a – a uh, fun part of the year. It's what the kids look forward to most. So it's uh, it's an exciting time. It comes with a lot of anxious moments, uh, especially with such a young team and um, a new season. You know, that uh, forces your coach to really do two things. Make sure you're trying to cross all your T's and dot all your I's, number one, and also do your best to make sure the kids don't have too much information. It doesn't matter what we know as coaches on Saturday, what matters, excuse me, on Friday. Um, but it matters what the kids know, not what the coaches know. And that's an important, important thing to keep remembering. But very excited uh, for this football game, very excited to watch these kids play. And, you know, that's really what you get to do as a head coach on game day is, is watch the team go out and play and hopefully execute at a high level and, and deal with adversity and good things and all the stuff that comes with it. And as far as being here, you know, um, I, I can't really explain how – I wake up every day and how excited I am to be here. Um, there's not a lot of words I can put into it. Uh, you know, I'm just I'm blessed. I'm lucky to be these kids' coach. I'm blessed to have this coaching staff, and I'm very blessed to be just a small part of this university. And we'll, we'll work like crazy to, you know, represent Oregon State University uh, in a positive way on and off the field. But uh, we're very lucky to be here as a family, and Stacy and I definitely know that. Coach, we all know about Utah connections in your life. And here comes the first game against the Utah mm -hmm. team, Weber State. Talk about their team and your thoughts of going against a guy you know, Jay Hill. Yeah, well, first of all, um, you know, Jay Hill, I recruited Jay Hill out of the same junior college, Rick's junior college I played at. And uh, I love Jay as a player. And when he told me he wanted to get into the coaching profession after he spent a little bit of time in the NFL, he decided that he wanted to coach. And I thought it was a great move for him. He has a tremendous family. And um, I've watched them grow and um, very, very quickly. And for Jay to make the decision to be a head football coach, he called me. That was a, that was a tough decision for him to to leave Utah and you know jump out and go be a head coach. And I think he, no question about it in my mind, he made the right decision for him. Uh, he will follow the plan, the state of Utah plan, if you will, um, the BYU, the Utah, the Utah State plan, and quite frankly, Southern Utah is down the same way. Weber State's the same way. He'll. Jay will be very successful. It looks like he's getting the support that he needs to build that program and keep it going in the right direction. Weaver's in a great place to be able to recruit. Um, the high school football is solid. So uh, this team got marketably better as you watch from game one to uh, through their end of the season last year. You know, they were right there in some games. Um, they won some close ones. They lost some close ones, but they were uh, in those games fighting like crazy. So. Uh, just much respect. It goes all the way through the staff. You know, Brent Myers has been there for a long time. Uh, you know, Steve Clark. I, mean, I can go on and on with the guys that are on that staff. Corey Hall. Um, so uh, I've been fortunate to be around a lot of them in my coaching career and uh, had a few of them as players and quite a few of them as, as coaches uh, down the line. So it'll be a, a little bit of a – I'd rather do it. You know, I'd rather have a reunion maybe like uh, – you know, July 4th or something, and hang out with each other. But uh, this just happens to be a game this time. Yeah, how soon did you realize, like, oh, shoot, my first game as Oregon State's coach, I'm going up against Jay? Um, it came pretty quickly. One of the first things you always try to do is look and see who's on those schedules. And, um, you know, I, I didn't really care who was on the schedule when I took this job, so I didn't study it before. So I would say probably within the first week I looked at the schedule and had an idea that, Yep, they're set. Weaver State, and you know, ironically, our first game at uh, Utah State, we played Utah, so uh, that was obvious with Kyle. So it's um, it seems to 
follow me a little bit that state of Utah then we'll go to Wisconsin and we play BYU I mean what's the chances of that so um, here we are again and then kind of on a different note just what's your timetable as far as figuring out whether Seth or Marcus will actually start the game and be in that first series um, I don't really know it's, it's not really a timetable at all it's uh It'll be what call we think fits best against what we believe they're going to do on the first snap of the game, you know, from a, uh, a defensive standpoint to our offensive standpoint. And again, those two kids' skill sets are, are both very capable of running the offense, but they also are very different. And you all know that as well as I, um, that there is a different skill set. So it won't be that this guy's taking the first snap because he's got the upper hand. It'll be just whatever play um, in the openers is uh, set for that young man. You mentioned. Oh, did, go ahead. Will Mitchell be the day of? Like, did you ever? I'm sure Coach Baldwin already knows. So, I know, but I've been sworn to secrecy. Sorry. <laughs> you mentioned how young this team is. The excitement around running out of the the tunnel. Mm -hmm. Bunch of fans at Reeser. How do you get them to contain kind of that excitement and not go out there and make a bunch of boneheaded plays? Correct. Uh, you, you know, you have to talk about that without question. There's a ton of emotion, and this game needs to be played with emotion. It is a huge part of it, but you also need – we've talked long and hard for the last about five to six days is that we need to stay right here. We, uh, we can't get too high. Um, at the beginning of the game, we can't get too low when things don't go our way. We have to be able to deal with adversity, and so you have to stay right in the middle of things. And, um, and that means play with composure. That means have mental toughness. That means dealing with, again, the word adversity pops up, and that also means dealing with the good things that come your way. So uh, you talk about it, and you communicate, and you get them in the moments. You don't throw many curveballs or surprises as far as, oh, wow, I wasn't expecting this on Friday night before the game or Saturday as far as what we do with our walkthroughs. Um, you try to get them settled in. I want kids to be kids. I want them to be themselves and prepare how they prepare. You know, I, I prepare probably very differently than a lot of them do. I, I kind of get, get away from them and let them go play football, which now these practices are like that. It's important for our coaches to walk away a lot these next three days and let the kids go out and execute. So they'll be, you know, they'll be sky high. Um, I worry about it, though, with a youthful team. It's something that you have to, you know, uh, let those first few snaps settle in, and hopefully it settles them down. But uh, we've discussed it, and we will continue to do that. There's been a lot of just – new things from spring and fall camp with all these guys on the team. How do you feel now that it's game week about where this team is? Well, I, f you know, I, I feel as good as we could possibly feel about them when they play against each other. Uh, when you're out there and you're uh, banging heads and you're competing and from the weight room to the off season to tug of wars to, um, you know, uh, our challenges that we have in the classroom, they've competed all the way through the whole thing. and. You get that to the scrimmages, uh, but you don't really know what you completely have until you get out there and compete against others. Um, but I feel good about them. I, like I said, I think today was our best practice. Uh, they seem to be getting themselves into the moment. They're excited about the opportunities that are in front of them, and that's so, so important. It's, this just does not matter what we as coaches feel or what we believe. It's what those kids feel and what they believe, and they seem to be in a good spot. But, uh, you know, it's – very uneasy times for me right now. <laughs> Coach, uh, earlier in camp, we were talking about the hot weather we've had here, and you brought up Arizona won seven games in the final minute. Yep. How satisfied are you with the conditioning of your team and how they've worked this summer? Well, if you sit back and you look today at our transitional rehab area out there at practice, there's you know one or two kids. Um, so we are in a great spot, and you know, uh, fortunately, that's where we sit today. And Hopefully we can get to the game in the same way. But I think Coach Simon and his staff, um, Arico and her staff, did a tremendous job of um, getting these kids to the point to where they were in shape in camp to be able to compete at a high level, handle a high volume of practice. And then we were able to get them through camp pretty cleanly because the kids practiced together the right way. And again, I keep emphasizing they need to know how to practice. They need to know how to play. But they handled the different temples very, very well throughout um, camp and quite frankly in spring they did a nice job of handling the tempo that we asked them to play at so you know job well done to this point again conditioning I think in a game uh, we'll learn a lot more when we get into a game but um, I'm glad it was hot I think it was good it was a hot camp and uh, it was uh, it was good we've had a few coaches lose a few pounds during weight during camp too so that's a positive. Gary is there one uh, skill group or position group from Weaver State that you want to highlight or you've kind of noticed from last year that stands out to you? 
Well, I would say this: if I, if I, the, the personnel, you know, it fluctuates and changes, and you don't quite know who's going to be where or, or where they're going. I know they've got an experienced offensive line coming back. One starter um, is gone. The center's gone. The right guard moved in to now play center for them. Um, so that's a lot of experience, similar to us. They have some experience on that front, which is good. I thought their special teams, which is one of Jay's specialties, were very good. Took a lot of chances um, a year ago, and. Uh, we're very aggressive and a, a well coached on special teams. So that's always a real concern. You walk into the first game of executing those special teams moments. Um, you know, uh, as you walk through the, the team, it's just the similarities to what we think they're going to do on defense and what they think they're going to do on offense um, that Steve's done for years. And Jay, from what I understand, is running the, the defensive side. Uh, there's a lot of you know quality players. They were very youthful a year ago, um, and in turn, they are again youthful this year. They've had a lot of turnover, so there'll be a lot of new faces. That's kind of hard to pick. And there's a couple playmakers on the edges, the wide receiver spot that made some nice plays, especially as the year went on last year. Um, big, big physical running back. Um, apologize for not knowing his name, but uh, I know he was a good player and he did some good things, especially as the year progressed. You mentioned that you feel as good as, as you could with the guys going against each other, but mm -hmm. then there's still that uneasiness going into the first game. What is the thing that you're most curious or interested to see that you just can't simulate in practice that you need to see in, in a game situation? The, just our ability to be able to handle the moment and the situation, period. And I go back to, you know, the mental toughness side. And I sound like a broken record. I understand that, but that is the bottom line. Can you handle the situations that are going to be put in front of you? You do your best to um, emulate each one of those in practice and put them in a position to be able to be prepared for that moment. There's still some things that's it's a weird shaped ball and it does funny things sometimes that you can't prepare them for. And uh, th those are the things that I'm probably the most you know, um, I don't say worried's not the right word, but anxiously waiting to see how they handle. Gary, you've talked about at the running back spot, it, it's going to take more than one, maybe more than two and up to three mm -hmm. to be able to play in these games. Has that? Have you seen that throughout camp of a few people stepped up? Yeah, you know, um, I think Deltron's come around. Uh, Damien's gotten better. Uh, without question, Ryan has his spot in there. And so those kids are behind Chris and um, obviously behind Storm. So it's a, it's a good crew of young men at that running back position. Um, each one of them, again, are a little bit different and unique within their style, but they can still you know, run the plays that we ask them to run. We want to be able to run inside zone, outside zone. We're a spread offense. you got to get on the edges of the defense, but yet you still got to be able to stick the power play in there every once in a while when we need it. So um, there will be those, uh, you know, the third and fourth and I guess fifth guy, if you look at it that way, they're going to get reps and, and be on the field in certain situations. But the one-two punch will be Storm and, and Chris as we walk in this first game. Coach, with this being a new team and everything's new, did you change your philosophy at all? and have to concentrate more on prep. I'm talking about prep for the season and your opponent. Did, did you go deeper into camp before you started thinking and looking at, at Weber State or pretty much this the way you've always done it over the years? And if so, what, how, when do you start looking at teams you're about to play? Yeah, th uh, that's a great question. First of all, if we just, stop, if we just talk about camp and preparing for Weber, uh, you know, right after the last scrimmage, that's where we changed. And we shifted gears at that point. It's important to let the kids know where they sit, who we believe is going to redshirt, where the two deep sits at that point, and we move ourselves into the scout teams in different situations. We still, you'll see us all year long. We'll still compete against each other, uh, you know, much like those NFL teams do. This team will handle those situations. They'll practice well against each other. So good on good is something that we will do all the time. But that change took place after the uh, second scrimmage of, uh, of fall camp as far as preparation for the teams, you know, we took a day um, on each team that we were unfamiliar with, which is many teams that we're unfamiliar with that we have not played in the past. Um, Coach Sataki, Coach e, uh, Coach E have a little bit more knowledge, and quite frankly, Coach Chad, because he was in the Pac-12, they have a little more knowledge. They didn't need to spend as much time on defense getting ready for uh, opponents because it was a common opponent when they were at Utah. But on offense, it's a, it's much different. So. Um, we use the day in the summer to, to kind of give us an initial scouting report on each one of the opponents that uh, we play this year. Is Coach uh, Sataki banned from talking with his brother this week? <laughs> no, 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 no. Fess is a great kid, and, you know, he goes back. I remember him running around forever and ever when he was just a tiny mite. So um, 
he's he's another one. He's another kid that you know played at Southern Utah, did some great things while we were there, and um, uh, you know he was always around us. And he went down there and had a very very good career. Um, decided to work himself through the coaching ranks, did some great things um, so far in coaching, and I'm proud of him. He's uh, it just makes me feel old. I mean, I got a guy that's the head coach, that's the head coach. I got all these guys over there that I've. And I didn't play with them anymore, and you know, didn't. It's, it's, I'm just getting old. So a lot of a lot of those coaches, it's amazing. I see their families, their kids are getting big. So um, that's what it does to me most. But Kalani can talk to his little bro all he wants. I know that you touched on personnel a little bit, but just a general overall, what does Weber State run? What are you facing offensively and defensively? Well, you know, if you look at them last year on, on offense, they want uh, Steve does a tremendous job of, of calling the game. Um, he was, uh, I've known him forever. Uh, he's a great coordinator. Uh, he handles the game very well. They want to run the ball first. They want to be physical. They want to show you multiple formations. Pre-snap awareness, uh, they want to confuse you before snaps with different kinds of shifts and motions. Um, abnormal formations, which is the way I think football should be played on the offensive side of the ball. You want to gain every advantage you can pre-snap. Um, they're going to run the power play. I'd imagine they're going to have a few fly sweep situations in there. They're going to have a quick passing game. They'll show us empty early without question and force us to be able to um, identify those situations with abnormal formations and, and empty scenarios. Um, defensively, you know, it'll be interesting to see if um, you know, Jay wants to play man coverage and how much man coverage he wants to play. He knows that Coach Baldwin and Coach McGiven um, are going to shift and move and bounce around just like they do on their offensive side of the ball. So it'll be a it'll be a little bit of a chess match early on to see what they want to do. I'm sure they'll have the zone pressures and uh, the three under three deep coverages. They'll bring in five guys and they'll play some cover three and some quarters and some man and they'll probably try to blitz and get after us on those third down situations with a young quarterback. Coach, in your experience, have you found that there are so-called gamers? that maybe they take it to a level when the lights go on that maybe you hadn't seen in practice. Have you had players like that through the years, or does it normally translate? How they practice is what they do on a Friday or a Saturday. Yeah, I, first of all, if I ever have a kid tell me that, I'm going to tell, tell him he's crazy. Um, you know, you win games in practice. And, uh, you know, but is there kids that compete and have a little extra notch when they get out there on game day? I, I would absolutely agree with that 100% that there's – just kids that get in those moments, and for some reason they have that, whatever that is, um, that allows them to be special. And a lot of times that's what makes a, you know, an average player good and a good player great. And a great player elite is just, he just got it. And the things he does, you know, you're not coaching him, he just happens to do those things. And that comes from a lot of different things. Uh, mental preparation, it comes from, you know, genetics. Mom and dad have a lot to do with that, <laughs> all those things that are out there. But... Um, I want our kids to prepare and understand that they need to prepare. They can't expect to do something on game day that they haven't been able to do in practice. Just There's just not a magic wand or some you know, fairy dust that we sprinkle on top of your head and make you be really good on game day. And Coach, with respect to taking care of players, first and foremost, their welfare in all respects. Mm -hmm. There's a national story about a coach losing a position for allegedly not necessarily following that with players. I'm just wondering what your philosophy is when it comes to dealing with training staff and doctors about players' issues when it comes to. Yeah, first of all, it's it's communication, and you know our line of communication here is fantastic. Um, we get the injury report. The trainers tell us bottom line. Um, what is a kid? Is he limited? And uh, if he's limited, and he's going to participate still in practice, and we're going to put him in a transitional rehab, where a transitional rehab is the ability to help him be able to practice at something that's going to help him get better. If he has a bad shoulder, there's still some things he can do from a cardiovascular standpoint to be out involved in practice. Um, if he's limited, we're going to put a red jersey on him and we're going to put him in a spot to where our kids know that red means stop and do all we can to protect him. But that communication line, I think, is very good with the RICO through our strength staff to our coaches. Um, we pride ourselves on it. I'm putting kids in position to be successful. It's important for us to have all of our kids out of practice, and you'll see our kids in that situation. I think you have a responsibility to your football team as a player to be involved in practice when you can. If you can't, you can't, and I understand that. But um, if we can get better, we're going to try to get better. Um, and then as far as where the doctors are, Dr. Ackerman has been fantastic with communication with me. We have gone through some very um, – long rehabs, I guess, and, and very complicated situations with a couple young men as we've been here, and Isaac would be one of them. We finally 
looks like we've got that and we all know that story but those those conversations and those uh, situations don't it's just not okay this is what's going to happen to get him better and it takes communication it takes uh, a doctor that quite frankly will reach out and find the best of the best and a specialist and at Oregon State we're very lucky because there's not an ego of a doctor saying well I can fix it I'm the best at that it's like if I don't know there's somebody better at this than me then let's get our kids there so um, you know that's important to me and and then talking, listening to kids. You know, you got to listen to what they feel and where they're coming back from, and um, they know when they're ready as much as anybody else. And it's a game where you want to push them. You have to, you have to grind kids. But our kids, I think they know that we're going to, you know, push them in a very positive way, week in and week out. To when they're ready, they're ready. But we're going to follow the uh, uh, the trainers, and I think we have a, a very good system in place. Linebacker was a, a position going into camp that you said you were really curious to see how kind of it all was going to shake out. Now that you're heading into the first game, how do you feel like that position group developed with Joshua James kind of moving into that hybrid role and some new guys stepping up? Just how would yeah. you evaluate that group? You know, Josh has been in there. Um, there's, you know, you got Rama, you got Caleb, you got, <laughs> um, you know, Jonathan's out there, Bright's out there. There's a, there's a number of those kids. David Henry's out there that are, going to be in that spot and Josh is the one that has the most um, experience but uh, I think we're in a good spot you know it's going to be there, there's been a lot of effort put in with those kids mentally to be able to adjust to the scheme and the way we kind of go about things and the odd front there's a lot of moving pieces to our offense right now which causes you to think so um, I'm very excited to see them play I know that the care factor the want to is extreme <laughs> to say the least with those kids you know that's the one crew every single day i gotta kind of now it used to be i have to raise my voice a little bit and tell them to tag off or to wrap up the right way and uh, be smart now at least i can give them a little bit of a wink of the eye and say let's be smart today um, they want to get after it they love the game of football which you know you want that in your linebackers so it's going to be huge to see how they play because they need to play well for us to be a good defense you announced uh, last week that Gavin Andrews will be redshirting this mm -hmm. year. W what do you foresee as his role as far as, I mean, as a player with so much experience? I mean, could he factor in helping those guys on the line? And just how, how, what do you think about your offensive line depth at this point with him out for the year? Okay, Gavin has done that already um, ever since he has made the decision to go make himself great. And that is the plan for Gavin a year from now is to not be a good football player but be an elite offensive guard in the country. Um, in the Pac-12, yes, but in the country. And that is his goal, that's his mindset, and that's the direction we're headed with Gavin. In turn, he's done a great job of accepting his role and understanding that he can be a tremendous leader. He can um, help the young kids, and there's, there's a lot of experience on that front. We all know that, but helping those young, young linemen that we have, because our backups are very young, he'll be tremendous at that. Um, much like Isaac did when Isaac was preparing to come back and, and get himself where he needs to be, much like Daryl Garrison is doing right now with the quarterback position. I mean, it's, uh, it is a huge, huge asset to this team that those kids that are out, sitting out, want to be involved and are, you know, are part of things every single day. You get, you know, doesn't a day doesn't go by that Tim Cook's not out there on the practice field wanting to at least, you know, be in the middle of, of what's going on. So it's, uh, hopefully that continues to be contagious for the youth. Gary, and how about the secondary as well, where you can talk about Larry Scott, but how about the other guys like Cyril and maybe Justin Strong and the rest yeah. of those guys? Have you seen them progress throughout this fall camp? Going into Saturday? Cyril and Justin are playing with a lot of confidence, which I would expect them to because, they're, in, in my opinion, they're very good players. They're physical. They're tough-minded. Um, I think they're coached very, very well by Derek Odom in the back end, and um, they've, they've, they've prepared well. So it's going to be interesting to see how they get out and, and fight and play as, as a secondary. There's... A number of those kids that will roll through there, especially as we go through our corners packages, um, with the number of wideouts that are on the field for us. But you know, um, you know, Brandon Arnold. There's a lot of those safeties that have, have come a long, long way since um, we started back in the first day of spring. But um, they got to go out and play, and they're excited. Cyril's waited a long time for this opportunity. You know, he come a long ways away. Ruston, Louisiana, is a long ways away from here. In case anybody's wondering, and he came here and is very excited about this university and this is his time and he's patiently waited until his junior year to have that opportunity. What do you like on game day? What's kind of your routine? Um, what's what's Friday going to be like while you're You know, I'm call I'm very I'm very calm on game day. Um, I and I am when it comes to uh, Friday, you know, um, you'll probably sometimes on game day say yeah, right, but that's uh, but um, 
I want the kids to be relaxed. I want them to know that they are prepared. You know, I like to sit back and it's 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 a great moment for me when I get to sit back in the very back of the tunnel and watch those kids all run out in front of me and watch them take their field. So, um, you know, I, I like to just kind of hang back and, and try to help them all I can. Um, I think, I, I don't think I will always be on the aggressive side as a head coach as far as making decisions that I think are, you know, some may say risky, some may say crazy, but uh, we want to be uh, on the edge of things. We want this whole program to live on the edge. And when I say that, I mean that in a very positive way with what we do. And I think we need as coaches, offense, defense, special teams, myself, we need to, you know, be aggressive in our thoughts that this is an aggressive game. Uh, but, you know, Friday nights, it's a, it's a little bit of a change for these kids. We're going to sit back, we're going to watch a movie, or they can watch a football game, and some will be, uh, you know, talking to their buddies. Some will be, I'm sure, on their cell phones hanging out. Some will be watching, playing dominoes or whatever they're going to be doing. So we'll be relaxed, kick back. By the time we get on the bus to go to the hotel on Thursday, excuse me, um, afternoon, the game plan is in place. These kids need to sit back, relax, and go have some fun. And then one last uh, Jay Hill question. I mean, you said you recruited him, obviously saw him as a player and as a coach. Just what's he like as far as style of play, style of coaching, just kind of for those of us who don't know him? Yeah, I, I say very much the same, especially on defense. You know, we grew up in the same defense. Jay played in the defense, and you know, it was Kyle's father's defense. And Kyle and I were fortunate enough to spend many, many years together kind of tweaking it and doing this and doing that and putting the zone blitz part into it. And when we first started running that defense, there was no such thing as a 3-under-3 three 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 under three deep defense zone dogs that I knew of at that point. And so he learned uh, by playing in it. He learned by being uh, part of it as a coach for many, many years. And then he's been over to the offensive side of the ball, which I'm sure has really helped him as a defensive coach. You know, he spent some time on offense coaching, which um, when I did that in my career, it was a, a great move for me to go from the offense over to the defense. I'm sure Jay has had that exact same experience, seeing some things will give him an opportunity to be a better coach. Uh, but he's he's a, he's I hire I'd hire Jay Hill in one second because he does two things he takes care of kids and he can recruit and that, that's what great coaches do and I will never look at it any other way. Gary, I might have missed this during camp but on, on game day, as far as calling the offensive plays, is that you, Coach Baldwin, a collaborative effort? Offense. Yeah. Offense. Yeah. If I call one offensive play, we got some serious <laughs> issues. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that stuff is a whole other language to me. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's all Coach Baldwin, Coach McGiven, much, much involved. You know, Kevin McGiven is upstairs. Those two are highly, highly involved with the play call sheets and are, have been working very, very well in unison. And it's, uh, it's good for both of them to be in the position that they, they are as far as Kevin being up, Dave being down on the field and moving that offense. Gary, what has Lyle Moivau meant to the, the quarterback's progression throughout this offseason? It's got to help to have someone who played in this program at that position really helping out these new guys. It does. You know, Lyle is – he's kind of – Lyle's steady Eddie, just like you want a quarterback to be. You know, he's done a good job. And, and it's not just because he played here. That's a huge part of it. It's very important for him that, uh, you know, Oregon State means a lot to him. And – that's why he's still here. You know, he could have had some options to do some other things, but he stayed here because he wanted to be part of it. And he's grown as a coach. But the the youth there, getting in the moment. And I sat down with Lyle last night when I was walking out, and it was he was sitting in there with one of our other GAs, Nick. And I looked at him. I said, you know, we just got to keep these kids moving through the process. And he can bring a little different light than Coach Baldwin can, than Coach McGibbon can. Um, and even really di different than Daryl Gerritsen can because Lyle has played a lot of football at the highest level, and he's had a lot of success. So he's, he's accepted that role, and uh, no one had to talk him into accepting that role. He was excited about it. So he's, he's doing a nice job um, with, you know, the quarterbacks, uh, the young Pauly kids on the team. He's going to be a really good football coach. Thank you, it? Coach. Okay, thanks, guys. Good luck this weekend.